Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting back into our talks of Powers of 10 and really with Powers of 10 and House of X being two different series that are telling one grand story with Powers of 10 doing your time jump and House of X playing out in a more linear fashion or at least closer to it in comparison. But at this point where we once again get into Mr. Sinister, we actually discover how Professor X plays this time a little bit differently in hopes of coming out with a better result. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so jumping right into it, and one thing that I feel like is super important, or at least stood out to me, that we had seen taking place with Moira McTaggart in year one of this 10th life, and that was the point when she initially approached Charles Xavier, and at some point after showing him all the lives that she had lived through, she had also mentioned that this time we're going to have to break all the rules. And finally in Powers of 10 issue number 4, her saying that is beginning to make sense, because after her meeting with Charles and then both of them going to see Magneto, both Xavier and Magneto go to meet Mr. Sinister. And it's not necessarily who they're meeting in this case, but it's what they do when they meet him. But before we get to that, another thing that's pretty important is that when we arrive here on Sinister's Island, which is called Bar Sinister, which is very much a callback to Secret Wars when Doctor Doom assigned Mr. Sinister as Baron over Sinister's particular region. And aside from that, it also reminds me a bit of the Desolation Islands, which we had seen before were the islands where Mr. Sinister had did his research. But we'll get more into that shortly. But so when Xavier and Magneto arrive here, they bump into a first Mr. Sinister who's not quite Mr. Sinister. So as a result, Magneto gives him a bit of motivation to introduce them to the real actual Mr. Sinister, who in my opinion are one of the most important people needed to make this work. And so when they approach this next Mr. Sinister, they begin to inform him that they're aware on his work in genetics, with Sinister of course having a history of collecting and studying both human and mutant genetics. But when they come here, they tell him they want him to focus mainly on the mutants, and they'll even provide him with more DNA, including their own, with the addition of other mutants who may be hard to catch or sample from. And so real quick, with the addition of Bar Sinister being very reminiscent of Secret Wars, but the island along with this conversation also remind me a bit of what we had seen in The Hunt for Wolverine. And of course, time-wise, if The Hunt for Wolverine still plays a factor like at all with everything that Hickman is doing, then the events of year one would have then of course taken place decades before. But in year zero, when Charles and Magneto visit the island of Bar Sinister and they express that they're aware of Sinister's studies with genetics within humans and mutants, it really sounds like Sinister was still within the early stages of what we had found on the Desolation Islands in the Hunt for Wolverine where Sinister had eventually nearly collected the DNA of every man, woman, and child on the planet. But it's with proposing this idea that both Xavier and Magneto are harshly rejected and immediately after this Sinister is shot in the head and we're met with the real Mr. Sinister who at this point now has a mutant gene. And so now we've talked about the origin of Mr. Sinister a number of times before to where in a nutshell Apocalypse made him enhanced and extended his lifespan so he could continue his studies and Sinister has made his own modifications from there. And although up front he only admits to Charles and Magneto that he has a mutant gene, we later find out through the news and gossip of Bar Sinister which has kindly been given to us from Jonathan Hickman. But it's there that we find out that one of Sinister's secrets is that he had taken this gene from John Proudstar, aka Thunderbird. But with Sinister finally revealing himself and unshamingly being flattered with Xavier and Magneto wanting to meet him and solicit his cooperation, it's here with Charles Xavier where we begin to see what Moira was talking about with breaking all the rules. Because it's in this moment that Charles Xavier pushes Mr. Sinister to refocus his studies towards mutants and only mutants so that this way he would be ridiculously meticulous with it but with doing so Xavier also wiped his mind so he would forget that Xavier and Magneto showed up on this day. But instead Sinister would just think that this was a thought of his own and moving forward he would not remember this encounter unless Charles wanted him to. And so now for Charles Xavier for the history that we've known him prior to Powers of 10 or House of X there may have been a time or two where he's used his powers in this way to suppress people's memories or perhaps make them forget entire teams that he's put together much like Deadly Genesis where Vulcan came back and forced him to face the truth which all in all in the Hickman run in my opinion it makes it more believable that Charles Xavier at this point in his life would actually do this if at this time he believed it was the only way to save the mutant race. Magneto on the other hand given Charles's powers like he wouldn't bat an eye and we've already seen in Moira's previous life how far he would go just using the powers that he has, even if it meant turning the world upside down. 
figuratively, like we've seen him prove numerous times that he'll do whatever he believes that it takes. But aside from the breaking the rules aspect, the reason why Mr. Sinister is so important is mainly based off the betrayal event that we had talked about previously on this playlist, and I got a link down in the description below. But it was throughout this betrayal event where we had the four generations that came from Mr. Sinister, which both created mutants who were carbon copies of their original selves, which for the record, I am hoping are the ones who went on that mother mold, but we not finna go there right now. <laughs> but they would create mutants which were carbon copies of themselves, for military purposes which were designed after the sentinel hound program but with xavier and magneto visiting mr sinister much earlier than when this would have started in mora's other life this now gives charles the opportunity to get ahead of the betrayal event actually playing out the way that it did when sinister sabotaged these mutants to the point of where the fourth generation nearly annihilated the mutant race but with your previous generations with like your one-to-one -one carbon copies for the mutants to have a chance for the things coming ahead it's very much important that they still exist but this time around we're seeing Xavier who's sparking this controlled incident which also gave us other mutants like Rasputin who has five mutant genes and also Cardinal who is more of your passive type but even still with this idea given the Sinister essentially re-sparking their creation within this timeline but in this case with what Charles Xavier knows it gives him the chance to prevent the actual betrayal event before the fourth generation which is the one that destroyed everything but from here jumping forward to year 10 it's here where we see Charles Xavier take Douglas Ramsey to Kokoa for the first time. And the timing of Charles doing this now and not earlier likely has to play in with certain factors like Douglas Ramsey coming of age, discovering his mutant power, and knowing how to use it to an extent before bringing him here. But also with doing so, he tells him very straightforward that he needs Douglas's gift to decipher any language so that he can communicate with Krakoa better than Charles can. Because even with the telepathy of Charles prior to bringing Cypher here, his communication with Krakoa sounded very much like a broken English because Charles could likely pick up simple patterns. But because of this, Charles would be stuck with the limitation by himself with making conversation like Charles's friend, Island is friend. And for this reason, he very much needed Cypher here not only to communicate with Krakoa, but with doing so, eventually build a language to which Charles or any other telepath could then just transfer to other mutants and bridge that overall gap of communication. But while Douglas Ramsey, aka Cypher, is here and Charles is asking him to get more acquainted with Krakoa, to where at this moment all Charles can understand from Krakoa is Krakoa is sad. But it's here where we're given just a, a slight example of what Charles would hear Krakoa say with his telepathy versus what Cypher would hear via translation. Because Cypher tells Charles after briefly speaking with Krakoa that one, yes, Krakoa is sad, but it's much deeper than that. Because thousands of years ago, Krakoa was once known as Okara. But upon the arrival of these dark beings, Okara was then separated into Krakoa and Arako, which from that time has left Krakoa incomplete. But these dark beings who had did this when they arrived, they had also come wielding the Twilight Sword. And as far as who they are, we really don't know at this point and in the case of this being the twilight sword which was created by Surtur it's possible that this may be the case but still at this point it's a bit of a stretch and I mainly say that because through the years we've seen slight variations to the twilight sword to where most of them have kept their broadsword jeweled gold type of shape and color depiction but there's also been instances with the twilight sword which you have known to have been associated with Surtur to have some of a resemblance to this sword that we've seen and because a number of people have wielded the twilight sword we can very well be looking at someone using Surtur's sword or an entire different entity who has created their own Twilight Sword much like Surtur but with different powers and different capabilities but perhaps in this case something more similar to Ileana Rasputin who created her soul sword while in limbo and man we haven't talked about that since the new mutants movie was announced and I mean before it got pushed back the first time but thousands of years ago when these dark beings arrived Earth's hero was actually Apocalypse the <laughs> savior of the world but it was him who had pushed them back through the doorway which they had came through along with Arako and with doing so, Apocalypse gave up his horsemen for them to stand guard on the other side to make sure that that door stayed shut. But after seeing this and further speaking with Xavier, Cypher understood that Xavier had a large plan, of which Xavier shared with Cypher through his telepathy. And you've got to imagine, like, it is a lot. But for Cypher, who was already on board, it really just convinced him the more how much this needed to be done. And it's from here where Cypher began to build on top of his communication with Krakoa to where he would eventually develop a language which the mutants could use so that it could be implemented in a similar fashion of how it was used in more of his previous lifetimes. But I also gotta say this, like with Charles showing Cypher the plans he had for him and Krakoa, I'm pretty sure he left out certain details from more of his previous lives, like in the ninth life when he then merged with Krakoa sometime in the future after the betrayal event, which I believe was a result of him being mortally wounded and the remains of Krakoa bonding with him to what would eventually just be a corpse. But I'm pretty sure Charles left all that out. 
But that'll do it for this one guys. I finally feel like at this point we can start to get into year 1000 and the ascension which I would much rather do all in one video mainly because Hickman has so much going on and for that reason much like the betrayal event I don't want to brush over it but rather take the time to kick it off and kind of sort out all the information we've gathered of it so far. But that'll do it for this one guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again in the next one. Alright, later.